All right, so today we're in chapter two of Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. So we're in day two, it's just four day plan, and we'll be through this. All right, here we go. So it starts off in chapter two, we see the word therefore again. Now remember, anytime you see the word therefore, the question you ask is, what is it therefore? So what was happening right before this? In a lot of Paul's letters, therefore is the hinge between the motivation and the practice, right? Here, it is a hinge, but it's not as strong as we saw in Ephesians, if you read Ephesians with us, or in the book of Romans in chapter 12, there's a crazy strong hinge. It's not like that here. It is still there, but it's not as strong. So he says, in light of what I've just said, uh, if there's any encouragement in all this, he says, make my joy complete by being united with one another. And how do you do that? Well, he explains that you do that by having the same mindset that Jesus had when he was with us, right? Like he had he sat at the top, you know, like he didn't consider equality with God to be something to be grasped or held on to. Like though he was in very nature God, Paul says that he made himself a servant for the good of other people. He submitted, he lowered himself. And he's like, that's the recipe for unity. So have that mindset uh, in your relationships with one another. And Paul says, that will make my joy complete. It's this idea that he wants them to be more unified. They're not as split as the church in Ephesus. This isn't like an urgent plea out of desperation, but he wants them to be on the same page, to be unified in the church. Um, he then talks about, he says, uh, to work out their salvation with fear and trembling. Now, he's not telling them to be afraid of God, right? Jesus explains this on a number of uh, different occasions. He's like, no, you look to God out like as a father, right? Not as a slave. So what is Paul saying there? Well, there's this phrase, fear and trembling in the ancient world and ancient Greek. Those things often were packaged together. The idea is awe and response. And so he's like, so you work, it's something within you, but you work it out. So in light of everything that has, like Jesus has done for you, like the fact that he was like the man upstairs, at the top and he made himself sit on the bottom for the good of everyone and even gave up his life he's like let that like sit with you and respond in awe of that and he's like so therefore another hinge like do everything without grumbling or complaining and then you'll shine like stars right it, uh he's getting back to this idea that jesus drove home of being the light of the world um but where he says to work out what's happening within you, he builds on this with a really powerful idea, okay? Don't miss this. He says, it's God that works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure, right? The idea, will is to want, like to desire, and to do is to accomplish those desires. He's like, God is working within you and has given you certain desires and the ability to carry out those desires. And so there's a pretty like cool thing to think about here there are some things within you that are just different. They're just desires that are there and you can't explain them. Like for me, I love to build. I love to see nothing turn into something. It's why I love the idea of starting a church. It's also why I love the idea of starting a business. I just love seeing something small grow and mature. I think it's a beautiful thing. I don't know why though. I just love that. Uh, Paul would say, God put that in me and I have the opportunity to like give it back to him and be like, okay, what can you do with this desire? And so what is it for you? Like, what desire? Maybe it's this desire to ha you have to be hospi hospitable. Maybe you love to serve people, make them feel comfortable. My mom's like that. She just loves to serve and welcome people. I'm not like that. I wish I was. I'm not. But different people have different desires. And so my question for you today to think about is like, what is it that maybe God put in you that's unique? And for you, it's just normal because you're used to it, right? And, and so it seems like nothing, but it is unique. What are the desires that are within you? And what would it look like to offer those back to him? You know, like Paul writes in other places that like with that, when we give something back to God like that, he's able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine according to that, that strength, that power that's within us. Um, so think about that. Like you've been created in a unique way, I believe, for a unique reason and purpose. And what if we took those skills, those desires, and we're like, okay, God, like what do you want to do with this? Maybe we would be surprised Maybe we would see uh, more than we could ask or imagine. So that's day two. Appreciate you sticking with it. Two more days. You're halfway there. See you tomorrow.